Hey there, Time to Fish Man here. I'm going to tie up a stimulator, more of a kind of a stonefly imitation here, but it can be taken as a hopper or a terrestrial of some sort. I'm using a three times long curved shank hook here. It's a size 12, and I just, that's kind of the go to stimulator hook, is, is a slow, long bend. Um, I, I do wish this one had a bigger gape on it, or gap. And however you call it, um, but I get by. So I'm using white thread. This is a 6.0 Danville thread. I've angled the hook eye down in the vise just so that I can get the tail or false tail on. Um, it's not going to be really representing a tail in this case. It's just going to be more of an extension of the wing and a pad for the fly to help float on. So for that, you would normally use kind of a natural color of elk or deer hair or a bleached depending on what you're trying to match in this case I'm gonna match a little uh, small stone fly and I'm gonna use a dyed dark done patch of hair nice fine patch of hair that I've found um, in order to match kind of the slate gray um, opaque almost see-through kind of wings that the stone flies tend to get um, around here in the spring so uh, that's why I'm using this color here and just to throw in a little variant. So I'm going to cut a little patch off the skin there. Always cut nice and tight down to the, the leather and that way your patch will become much more organized as you use it over time. Okay, we need to get the under fur out of this hair. So I'm going to spread it with my fingers. I'm holding the tips and I'm using a fine tooth comb or you can use your fingers or even your scissor points or a bodkin or something. You just want to get that little fur out of there and so that it stacks nice. Okay, I'm going to switch grips so that I'm holding the points facing out now. I'm going to grab a little hair stacker here and go in tips first. A few taps on the desk and they're stacked up nice and even. that out of the way. Okay, you only want this to protrude about a hook gap in length past the body. And then do a pinch and loop and catch it on top. Doing your best not to let it roll. I'm keeping my fingers pinched down nice and tight. Oops, I got a couple stragglers there that I'll fix up here in a minute. And I'm just going to do kind of some just medium tension wraps here this first time then on my way back up I'm going to give it nice full tension okay there's that I leave them long some people cut them off I leave them long just so I can lift them up like this easier and clip them away at a shallow angle like so like I said I do have a couple little stragglers this time but it ain't gonna hurt nothing I'll clean it up okay just clean up your mess at the front there. Some touching turns. And pop that guy off. Okay, on my way back down I'm going to tie in a piece of copper wire. This one is going to be a copper brown. Uh, any any size, any well any color will work. I wouldn't recommend going too big on a size like this, but I am going to go ahead and use this copper brown color. So I'm going to take a four to six inch piece of that, and this is size small, and catch it in on the side of the hook shank and tie it down where the tails begin to come out of what will be the body. Okay, that looks good. Just do a little bit of cleanup here because it's driving me crazy. There we go. Okay. All right. Once you've got that on there, you can come up again and just tidy up anything that you've missed. Sometimes it's hard to get those deer hair to come down like that. This is just a nice fine hair and it just takes practice to wrap it down neat like that, but it's under the body. Don't make a big deal about it and worry about it. So I'm going to use some super fine dry fly dubbing. And this one is uh, Calabatus color. It's just a natural tan, really nice color. Um, 
when it comes to, I'm, I'm finding more and more that when it comes to bugs and things like that, if you're in the gray area in the color wheel, you're going to be generally just fine, especially when it comes to dry flies and and uh, terrestrials and things like that. Um, black's the obviously a, a great color too, but anywhere in the tan to gray color, um, fish are going to take it. It's half the time you're fishing they have such a short window to actually look at what they're taking um, and it's shadowed anyway from up above and they're looking up at the fly so this tan natural color is just going to cover a whole slew of different insects and breeds and variations of things so I'm just going to go a little bit more Notice I'm adding just a little bit at a time instead of getting too crazy with the dubbing. It's easier to add than take away. Okay. And just build up just a little bit more up front there. And I'm going to go a little bit more. Building kind of a little chunky body this time. Um, Depending on the bug you're trying to imitate or whatever, you know, you can go the thickness of the body or whatever. Um, that's how you'll adjust the thickness of the body anyway, but I'm just trying to get it nice and even. There we go. That'll work. Okay. Now let's tip this guy up to its natural tilt there. There we go. And you can see I've got my wire here waiting. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and grab a, for this color variation, I'm going to use a honey, a honey done color. You can see it's got a little bit of a honey color mixed with a cream in this patch. Um, this is a Whiting Herbert Miner Pro Grade Hackle. Um, so I'm just going to pick through the neck here and be careful on my selection. And I'm going to go for about a size 14 on these bottom ones here. Like I said, the hook is a size 12, um, but this particular hook has a smaller gap that matches about a 14 instead. So I'm just going to take my time here and find the right size. That one looks good. Okay. Because you basically just want to, when you're doing this, you want the tips to extend to about the hook point or just past. So that's going to be just right. Okay? You don't want to tie into this fuzzy, ugly stuff. Get up the fly, uh, the hackle, excuse me, a little bit into some of the nicer stuff. Okay? And I'm just going to strip off some of the lower fibers and tie this in. Okay. <clears throat> that's tied in nice and securely. I'll go ahead and use some hackle pliers and make sure my first wrap, I want the shiny side of the feather or the color side facing forward to the eye and the convex side facing back. So not super critical, but that's what I'm shooting for here. And this just matches the body really well. And this isn't necessarily to do anything more than just help float the fly really because the bodies obviously aren't hairy and they don't have a bunch of legs hanging out down this low um, on a natural stone fly or most terrestrials for that matter um, I'll continue that in a minute okay I've, I've made my way back to the tail I'm gonna grab my copper wire bring that over and catch that hackle down okay and I'm going to release the hackle pliers. I've got it. And now I'm just going to come up. And what this does is this crosses over the stem numerous times and really reinforces the fly. Just try to get some nice even spacing as well as it shows some segmentation. Um, but it's more to strengthen the fly and the hackle in case some teeth get nicked into it or whatever it's just not going to all unspool on one wind on you 
couple wraps over that wire and then I'm going to hold this nice and tight, my thread, as I wiggle this wire and pop it off. Okay? All right. Get this tail end here. I don't get it right down to the nub. I leave a little tiny bit sticking up just to give it some help so it doesn't pull free as easily. Okay? There you go. That's starting to look good. Okay, now I'm going to go ahead and butcher it a little bit um, because I want the wing to lay down a little bit flatter. Stonefly's wings lay pretty much flat when they're sitting there. Um, I don't even know if I'd say relaxed because they're not relaxed when you're holding them, but uh, um, I don't want this to kick up my wing any more than it has to because hair tends to kick up anyway. So I'm just going to go ahead and do a long butchered cut sloped to the back, just like that. I know that's goofy, and that might <laughs> bother some people, but I want my wing to lay as low as I can get it to go. Speaking of, same patch of hair here. I'm going to clip off a bigger chunk this time to represent the wing. And again, tips, flare it out, comb out these under furs, clean it up. Okay, tips first in the stacker. Get that little guy out of there. Tap it on the desk. Okay, hold it in it sideways. I'm going to lift and slide that out. Okay, in the direction I want them to go. Okay, pinch, take those out, get that out of the way. All right, for a length, I want it to be about as long as the tail is. Okay, so like I said, this little tail is just more of a, as an extension of the wing, just another way to float the fly even better. Okay, it's not necessarily imitating a tail in most cases. So that looks about right to me. I'm gonna pinch and loop, come straight down. On it again, just medium tension the first time, medium the second, and then you can start to bear down on it a little bit, a little firmer each wrap that you go. Now you can cut those off uh, short so you don't have a big spiky mess like I've got here, but uh, either way will work. You can give it a haircut now because it's got the longer tails anyway, so I can just take it off. And I'll just take a second and clean up for real quick. A lot of people, like I said, will go ahead and just trim that off to length before so they don't have to do this. But sometimes you can get a better little taper and, and collect the fibers, the little stubs better um, going this way. And just Practicing, just kind of touching turns, really get that to lay down and give yourself a ramp to the head. And if there's one or two sticking up, no worries. Okay, and now make sure you look and you bring that thread over that wing so that it touches where the dubbing on the body ends. Okay. See that wing sticking straight up like I was saying? It gets kind of even worse if you don't do that trimming thing, but a little trick I learned from old Davy McPhail is, uh, so I'm gonna go down and then crease it. Push forward and down and crease it. So it's basically like, kind of down and creasing it. And see how I just got it to slope down lower? That's what I want, okay? That looks a lot better. So a little bit of a, Forward press, forward slide, and then crease. Kinks it and kind of helps it lay a little flatter. And that looks good. So thanks for the tip, Davey. All right, next I'm going to grab a grizzly hackle. And same thing on the size. Get it very close to the body hackle. And you can air even a tiny bit bigger up front here. That's just about right. Okay, again, 
get rid of this fuzzy stuff and get up into the good hackle. Okay, strip a little bit away and tie this hackle in on the side, just right on the bare stem. Okay, and just for sake of ease of completion, I'm just smoothing out my little ramp there. You can see I've got a nice smooth little landing pad there for the rest of my dubbing and this last piece of hackle to, to wind onto. Okay, I'm gonna go, a lot of people will change and they'll use like a bright orange or something like that. I'm gonna stick strictly with just this natural tan color. So I'm going to the same package and I'm gonna take just a little clump out of the package here. and dub it on. Helps if your finger's just a little bit sticky, sweaty, waxy, whatever you want to use. Um, you really get the dubbing on better. Okay, so you notice I, I wasn't worried about just starting right back at the back because I've got a long enough rope here that I can really fill it in where I need to. So I'm going to come right up, pinching the wing so I don't roll it over. Come right up and tuck it right on top of that wing a little bit so that it butts up to where I left the dubbing off for the body. There we go. And that helps keep it kind of down too. So I just need just a touch more here to get up front. Okay. There we go. I don't like to overcrowd the eye. So here we go with the front hackle. This one should be long enough that I can wind it by hand. Again, I want the best color of the fly sticking forward towards the hook eye. Okay, so that the convex or concave side, I mean, um, is, is flaring backwards. So I'm going to do a complete wrap at the rear there. And then start palmering forward. nice and tight and tie that off when you get to your waiting thread of the eye two three four okay and I can even fold that back a little bit and pop that off because I held tension on my thread and now I'm just rolling back over to make sure it's secure so that was a pretty fine hackle there and if you got any little flyaways you can either Flare them back with your fingernail, or just trim them off with your scissors. In this case, I am going to just push them back so that the stubs, it's a cleaner, it gives a cleaner eye if you can do it this way. Okay, there we go, we're almost done. I am going to just darken up the thre uh, thread a little bit. In this case, this is just a permanent dark olive marker. Um, black, brown, whatever, or even just leave it white. I just tend to see most insects have darker colored heads on them. And Okay, make one more wrap there. And throw a whip finish on here. I apologize if you can hear the vacuum outside. The wife's got the vacuum running today. And once you get into that color a little bit, there we go. This was kind of a long whip finish, but I just wanted to get into that color a little bit. Okay. And where it was so long, you can see it, it kind of broke off on me. Because I, I, I put so many whips on it, it was tough. But I know that was a good knot, so I'm not going to worry about it. And uh, I've got a little bit darker head on there. I put some head cement on it, and then I will show you a couple different angles of this fly and I think it turned out pretty good. So a little drop of head cement here. And that'll never come undone. Okay. So again, I'm just gonna work a little bit of a kink into it. Get it to lay low, and there it is. This lighting's not the best, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to give you a kick this light out of the way just a little bit, and just show you, just kind of 
You can see almost how the hackle is tapering and I went just a touch longer in the front. I kind of like that look. And um, the fish are only going to be seeing it from the underside anyway. So when you look from the underside, try to make sure that the wing flares out and tapers evenly over the top. And just get, just just look at the body and just see if you've got a decent taper working, if your tail is nice and centered or if it's been kicked over to the side. These are things you want to practice. Um, but see, I've got this nice slate, dark dun colored wing over the top. Plenty of hackle to float this fly, a nice dark little head. And I apologize about the lighting again, but there is a copper wire kind of showing through there, though it's mostly for strength, as I stated before. But here's a nice little stimulator variant that uh, should have you into some fish for sure. Um, tie you up some of these guys. Obviously, colors are whatever you can imagine when it comes to stimulator patterns and and little attractors like this is, is all it is. Um, there it is. I can see it in the camera, but not in real life. Okay, so there it is. Tie you up some. One more tip that I can give you, and I will grab a small little hackle plier here to get my fingers out of the way. You can see right now it's fully round, okay? It just looks like a little round guy. That doesn't necessarily mean that it's going to sit right every time, although you do have the most weight on the bottom from the, the shank of the hook, so that's going to be your key factor in having this sit right is the extra weight on the bottom. Sometimes what I'll do, and I'll go ahead and do it to this one for you real quick, is I will trim the underneath out a little V underneath here so that it will sit flat and the body will sit down on top of the water and it will want to sit more correctly. So I'm going to come straight in at it and I apologize about the angle here. I'll show you better and I'm just going to come straight underneath holding the tail here and give it just a nice little trim. Sorry about the shakiness. This was kind of a impromptu decision. And all the way underneath I'm going to go ahead and just trim that hackle. All the way to the back. Okay. So what that does is gives you a nice little V So that these legs, excuse me, can sit out. See now I've got one tapering out that way, one tapering out that way, and it's nice and flat along the bottom. So that'll just have the fly sit just a little bit lower into the surface and kind of now it's got outriggers, little legs and outriggers sticking out at each angle, this angle, and then that one goes that way. So that helps sometimes too if the fly's not sitting right for you, give that a shot. Good luck. Thank you for watching.